Hello, I'm Steve Jevons. And this is my Shard Clock. shard clock. It's just the shape that the thing has taken on as it's evolved and it, uh, it reminded me of the shard office tower in London. It's, uh, it's become known as the shard clock. This clock uh, has been in development probably for about eight or nine months. It is a chiming, it chimes the Westminster chimes on the quarters. It strikes the hours at the end of uh, the hour chime and it has a sweep seconds hand. Along with that it is quartz timed so it has a quartz module which pulses an electric hip built uh, stepper motor which drives the clock. One of my objectives with this clock was to try and see how compact I could make the chiming and striking units within the clock. Unfortunately that is kind of led to a problem in that it's not the easiest thing to film and uh, we've done our level best with this myself and um, my cameraman Ollie and I hope you can glean enough from this short video of roughly how the thing works. Um, there will be a further write-up on the New Zealand Meccano forum and I hope to publish this clock in a forthcoming magazine. So here then is my shard clock. Enjoy! Rather than the relay latch as used in my skeleton clock, which was published in CQ100 some time ago, I decided to simplify matters with this one and use an electronic solution to pulse the, the shard motor. The same quartz clock used from a cheap alarm clock is used to supply one second pulses, but these now clock the D-type flip-flop. The flip-flop changes state with each leading edge of of the pulse from the quartz unit in the same way as it did in the skeleton clock with relays. The flip-flop then drives the stepper motor via four Darlington transistors in a familiar H configuration. The unit has an accuracy of one to two seconds a month. The clock motor itself then takes the reversals from the electronic circuit. It consists of two electric coils wired in series and they then reverse the magnetic flux between which is the rotating magnet. The magnet is sandwiched between two bush wheels and each time the flux reverses the magnet makes half a revolution. So the shape of the the cores you see ensure that it will always rotate in the same direction. So one revolution then takes two seconds. So drive from the stepper motor to the hands is, is simply a 30 to 1 ratio and um, the various gearing to do that is fairly straightforward. A further 60 to 1 then takes the drive from the seconds hand through to the minutes hand and then a 12 to 1 to the hour hand. The sweep seconds is on the main shaft 
the minute hand is on a socket coupling uh, drive and the hour hand is secured to the ring you see. Uh, the ring is supported on, on four multi-purpose gear wheels uh, and also two pinions help support it. It's driven on its inner face, on its 95 to face. So that's on its 5 to 1 ratio face, which presented a small problem because the 12, it isn't easy to get a 5 to 1 ratio in a 12 to 1. So I had to reverse a, a 1 to 5 elsewhere in the, in the train in order to achieve that. Views here are obviously with the clock face removed. And some time-lapse photography here. We've got about uh, 15 minutes worth of, uh, of, sh of footage taken at uh, five second frames. The chime mechanism. The chime was kind of tricky, but in, in simplistic terms, there are four cams as you can see here, one for each quarter and um, they then close a contact in series with which is a further contact which will close when the minute hand reaches the zenith point. These then trigger uh, the drive to the uni selector. The uni selector is sort of hidden in the, in the clock but it, it consists of a bank of contacts and the wiper then runs over those contacts. Each contact it touches is wired to a particular relay then operating the solenoids which strike the bells. Here's the unit removed from the clock itself and you can see also the commutators which help select the correct number of, of notes to strike and also the control relays. The solenoids themselves are fairly straightforward and they use just gravity to restore once they've struck the bell. They are driven from 18 volts. So the unit then chimes with the Westminster standard Westminster notation and um, that's fairly straightforward in the horological world. After the chime you get the striking is triggered uh, on the hour. This uses the hour finder principle where the contact you see on the left is geared to the hour hand the right hand mechanism rotates until it finds the contact at which point the mechanism reverses after a short pause the time taken for it to reach the contact is proportional obviously to the hour of the day and the number of strikes it strikes will be dependent on how far it travels it then reverses back to its home position under control of a commutator on the rear of the clock which you can see here on the right hand side this restores the mechanism back home again so that then is the essence of the clock uh, it's very hard to see a lot of how it works from the footage because you can't really get right inside it with a camera but um, anyone interested, there is more information available on the New Zealand Meccano forum. So I suggest if you really would like to know more, please go and have a look there. Um, do a search on Shard Clock and you'll find it. And any further questions, you must please contact me. I'd be very pleased to, uh, to answer any queries about it. Thanks very much and thanks for watching this. Bye.